um, Texas Attorney General's Office. I think we only have a couple of new um, members on the board, but want to make sure that we get this done within a lot of time. If you have any questions concerning that, then um, staff or I can in the help facilitate that, but that should be done so that you all are aware of what the rules are um, concerning those laws. Acceptance of gratuities, no officials shall knowingly solicit or accept from any source, any state, service, or anything of value, including a promise of future employment, or consideration of having to exercise any official power, or performing any official duty on behalf of the city. The acceptance of any, any gratuity shall be disclosed as required by um, Chapter 176 of the Texas Local Government Code. A conflict disclosure statement with respect to a vendor um, is required if the vendor enters into a contract with the city or city is considered entering into a contract with the vendor and the vendor has given to the official or family member of the official um, one or more gifts that total $100 or more um, in the last 12 months preceding that time. So basically, if you guys have a business of your own, a private business of your own, um, it, it was Valentine's Day, so city decides, oh, well, we're going to contract with the vendor that every year we're going to send roses to our employees. And you, obviously, with your rose business, you know, you want to have the roses, so you're like, okay, I want to be a part of it. And so if those kind of things, so that would be you trying to enter into a contract with the city, and there would be financial gain to yourself because it's your personal business. Therefore, those are the type of things that you would need to disclose if that's the type of relationship that you have with the city. The use of facilities, no official shall, shall knowingly use any city facilities, personnel, equipment, or supplies, or use any confidential information concerning the property, operations, policy, or affairs of the city for his or her, his or her own private or personal or political gain. So conduct and commercial transactions, again, this is just saying that if you want the city to um, exchange any property, any sale of goods or services that's your personal business, then um, that has to be disclosed, you have to follow all the laws that govern those kind of transactions and that you won't be giving any special favors just because you're a board member. Um, representing interests contrary to those of the city, no official self shall knowingly represent directly or indirectly another person or any group or entity in any action or proceeding against the interests of the city or in any litigation in which the city or any department, agency, commission, or board is a party or may become a party to. Conflicting interests in legal proceedings, no official shall knowingly represent directly or indirectly another person or group or entity in any action or proceeding in the city's municipal court of record, which was instituted by a city employee um, in the course of in the course and scope of those official duties in any criminal proceeding in which a city officer or employee is a material witness for the prosecution. So the disclosure of personal financial interests and abstaining from voting. This is just what I was talking to you about before. If you have a if you have a conflict of interest, a personal conflict of interest, and you always be voting on something that would affect if you will get some gain from it, then you can't vote on the matter and you have to disclose that matter. So this is the preamble to the standard of conduct. Um, holding a seat on a city board, commission, or committee is an office trust, office of trust and service to the citizens of Colleen. All members are expected to fulfill their duties with di dignity, integrity, and in a manner that upholds high ethical standards. To further these objectives, the following principles are presented to govern the conduct of all board and commission and committee members. So principle one is honor. To dedicate to the highest ideal of honor and, and integrity in all public and personal relationships in order to gain moral authority and merit the respect and confidence of the city council and the citizens of Colleen. Principle two is equality. To serve the best interests of all the people all the time, treating everyone equally and favoring none. Principle three is obedience. To be diligent, to set an example of obedience to state law, city charter, local ordinances, and the city of Killeen governing standards and expectations that are either mandated or restrain the acts of local officials. Four, conflicts of interest. We talked about that already a lot. Number five, influence. Be aware of your potential influence as you relate to the city manager and staff and refrain from improperly influencing those official appointed officials or from thwarting the execution of any city organization, any ordinance, rule, or regulation. Um, six is confidentiality. Be faithful to 
safeguard confidential information, including all discussions and closed meetings, which we won't ever have. But ultimately, if there is confidential information that you do have, just make sure that you're not just looking at Inter Interference, be sensitive to avoid the appearance that a board, commission, committee member can inappropriately, personally intervene to provide special influence on an official decision act or act of the city. Civility, be respectful and courteous to one another. Staff and the public while executing your duties as a board, commission, or committee member. Constructive disagreement and debate are expected, but the effectiveness of citizen boards, committees, and commissions is dependent upon the members who are able to peacefully disagree without personalizing issues or becoming uncivil. Do you guys have any questions for me? Yes, Mr. Jordan. When you are saying about the, um, the chair have to sign off on that paperwork, do we supposed to go back and rectify that or we go just point forward? I think we just move forward from here. Okay. And we just move forward from here and we just make sure that that is being done from this moment on. As a matter of fact, from the, the minutes that you guys just uh, voted on for the last meeting, we make sure we sign it, give it to staff, and then we'll make sure just moving forward we're doing the right thing. Thank you. Of course. No, I cannot answer your questions. <laughs> Does the board have any questions for me? No. no. Okay. I'll Give the board to you. Yeah. I'll go next to you. Okay. Um, Can you read it out? I'll go with it. No, I was saying. Yep. Uh, okay, B, legal discussion advice about the legal parameters and legal ramification concerning a process by which invocation, acknowledgement, and or opening remarks can legally be added to us. City of Colleen and Jane. So, procedures regarding prayers and invocations at meetings. This was a great topic at the last meeting, so um, you all asked me to sort of do a presentation as to what are the rules behind it, like what or what what or what not can be done, why or why not it can be done. And so this is my attempt to try to help guide you in making your decision on this board. So the First Amendment is an establishment, establishment clause that says Congress shall make no laws respecting an establishment of religion. The whole church and state, I'm sure everyone has heard it over and over again. So you ask, how can you even have a prayer at a public meeting when it's supposed to be separate? Well, there's something called a legislative prayer and um, the courts have said that opening a, a governmental meeting with a prayer is not unconstitutional if, and there are some things that have to happen in order for it to be unconstitutional. So if it is, if it is given at the session's opening to lend gravity to the occasion, if it reflects the values of the nation, if it's given in a solemn and respectful tone, if it invites lawmakers to reflect on shared ideas and common ends, and if it's non-discriminatory amongst faiths. This is the site, and we have that there. There are some things that the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that if you do these things, it's likely that the prayer will be unconstitutional, and therefore, obviously, we shouldn't be doing anything that is unconstitutional. So um, if the prayer, there's a pattern of, um, denigrating or disparaging any other religion, if there's threatening damnation, preaching conversion, or proselytizing or advancing any faith or belief, then those are the types of things that if there's a pattern of it during the opening invocation of prayer, then it's likely going to be seen as unconstitutional um, and something that we, the city of Killeen, and you all, as a board, or representing the city of Queen, cannot um, be engaged in. So there's no bright line rule. There's nothing that says if you say this, if you say that. So there's no bright line rule. But what to do to avoid? What to avoid so that constitutionally permitted prayer can be had if you all do want that? So um, so avoid directing the public to participate. The prayer or invocation is supposed to be for the governing body. The public can participate if they want to, however you want to avoid making it seem as if it's mandatory or forcing anybody in public to do that. 
Don't single out anyone who's dissenting for criticism. Um, avoid indicating that decisions might be influenced by acquiescence in the prayer opportunity. Avoid classifying citizens or board members based on any religious views. Avoid chastising dissenters. And avoid refusing a, a request to offer a prayer, prayer by any particular group that's maybe opposite or different than what you believe. Overall, for the process of having a prayer or an invocation at a public meeting, to be constitutional, it shall not exclude any small denominations, agnostic organizations, or any atheist groups. So last week, you all were in a pretty heated debate for what's the definition of an invocation, whether that meant it was a prayer or not. And ultimately, it really depends on where you look. Um, there's many dictionaries out there, there's many things um, that's gonna give you definitions of what it is, um, or what it may, what invocation is, or what it may include. So I pulled some of the definitions from some of the widely known dictionaries that we all use. So the ask for process of asking for help or support, that's from the Webster. A prayer for blessing or guidance, as at the beginning of a religious service, that's from the Merriam-Webster. A formula for calling forth spirits or performing magic incantation, it's also from the Webster. The act of asking for help from a god or from a person in authority, that's from the Oxford. The act of referring to something or of calling for something to appear, also from the Oxford. So the city policy on prayer and vacation also separates the two as well. So there is a policy procedures regarding prayers and invocations at city council meetings. This policy took effect on February 1st of 2019. This policy, although some of the things in it doesn't really make sense for boards, but in it, it does specifically say the policy um, is also, it does govern boards and commissions as well. So some of the things um, that, that's in this policy that there's no requirement to participate. No member of the city council, city employee, or any other person in attendance at a meeting shall be required to participate in any prayer or invocation that is offered. Everyone will be treated equally in all respects, whether they choose to participate or not in the prayer or invocation. So um, this is just saying who can, so invocation of prayer can be delivered by a minister or of established religion or congregation, I'm sorry, or any lay person that resides in the city of Killeen. The opportunity is voluntary. Speakers are free to offer the invocation according to the dictates of his or her own conscience. So whatever religion that person is or non-religion that the person is, they're able to do it however they feel like is best for them. Um, to maintain a spirit of respect, the city council requests only that the prayer invocation opportunity not be exploited as an effort to convert others to a particular faith or belief of the, of the speaker and not to disparage any other faith or belief different from that of the speaker. And they're gonna be limited to two minutes. Scheduling, how, they, how is scheduled or supposed to be scheduled as a prayer invocation are scheduled on a first come, first serve basis and without in no specifications or purposes for any um, for any desired religion, whoever comes, that's, that's where they come for. If there's a specific um, city council meeting um, that that person desires, and they can be put on, on that particular meeting. Um, if the selected speaker does not appear at the meeting, the mayor may ask a volunteer from among the audience to deliver the invocation of prayer. If no member or audience is available, the mayor may ask a council member to give the invocation. So these are the general provisions. Again, uh, no speaker shall receive compensation for his or her service. Um, the uh, city secretary shall make a reasonable effort to ensure that a variety of eligible speakers can um, do the prayer or invocation. Again, that's for the city council. Um, city secretary is not going to be trying to govern our boards. Um, neither the city council or any staff member may engage in any prior inquiry, review of, or involvement in the content of any prayer or invocation to be offered by any speaker. Um, the policy should also apply to boards, commissions, and committees of the city of Killeen. This policy is not intended and shall not be implemented or construed in any way to affiliate the city council, which includes the boards and persons on it, nor to express the city council's preference to any faith, religion, religion, uh, denomination, or belief. Rather, this policy is intended to acknowledge and express the city council's respect for the diversity of the denominations, faith, and beliefs represented in practice among the citizens of Killeen. 
So I will say that the um, this time around this, so like I said, some of the things on the on this policy is a practical. So we are um, in the city's attorney's office, which includes the city secretary, working to revamp it. Some of it talked about um, contacting people via the phone book and. Honestly, I don't know the last time I've ever seen a phone book. So um, obviously some of it's out of date, so it's, it is getting updated. Nonetheless, the, the overarching theme of the policy is still intact and the things that should or should not be done. Yes? You know, I've been living in this world a long time, you know? And I respect you being a Buddhist, you being a Islam, I can kill it. That ain't my problem. Because it's in the game to respect everybody, no matter what they think. And no matter if we did pray, we can pray. If she don't want to be here, she can walk out. There's nothing wrong with that. If she wants to sit there, she can sit there. It, didn't you just say that somebody wasn't supposed to be oh. disparaged? Am I talking to you? Who's talking, me or her? I'm talking. I got the phone, right? Attorney, do I have the flow? You do. I thought it was actually going to be a question based on something that I've just said. And so with that being said. I, I am questioning about what you said, just said sir. because you made the comment in the religion, different types of religion. Absolutely. And you I'm using that as an example. By if calling. I may, the next agenda item will be all for everyone to dis actually discuss. Right. This agenda item is for me to present this. The next agenda item will be for everyone to discuss and take action on it. And so I would just respectfully ask, let me get to this, and then you, you all can do your discussions and everything that you choose to do at that point in time as on the agenda. Well, I stand corrected. Thank you. <laughs> so, just some legal advice about how to, if you all want to do a prayer invocation at the beginning of your meetings, um, some legal about, about how to do that in a way that's constitutional and that follows our policy that is inclusive and not degrading and not disrespectful in any way to anybody of any different religions or faiths. So um, I would start a list of people who would like to give an invocation of prayer or words of inspiration at the beginning of the meeting. Keep a running list and keep adding onto that list on a first come first serve basis. To, to create the list um, like initially, Try, do it in an impartial way. Obviously, if there's four people right now that raise their hand that say, I want to do it, now you have to decide who goes first. So I would just suggest you do it in an impartial way. Draw straws, draw numbers, and whoever is the closest one to the number, just some impartial way. That way no one's making the decision, okay, you, then you, then you. It's an impartial way for you all to start the list, and then after that, everyone just gets on on a rolling basis if that's what y'all want to do. Um, so, takeaway from this is you represent the city while serving on this board, and the city cannot choose or favor one religion over another, and ultimately, whatever you guys decide, it needs to be respectful, it needs to be constitutional, and it needs to follow the, all of our rules and our, and our policies. So, if, does anyone have any questions on my presentation or anything that I said? It does mean you can have prayer. You said does or doesn't? It does. You can, so long as you follow the policies and procedures. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. Question over here, ma'am. Yes. Since the the bulletin is kind of uh, you know too complicated, so can we get a copy of that content invocation and prayer about? You want the policy? Right. Yeah. So maybe I have printed out, but I can definitely give it with staff so that she can disseminate the policy to you all. Right. Yes, if we, that's not talking about. And it's also on the city of Colleen's website as well. Right. So I will give the floor back to you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course. Discussion and action, including creating a nonpartisan process for adding invocation. Acknowledgements and or opening remarks for future agenda items. Okay. I like before I make this motion I, I do I want to say something. Um I, I think that prayer is something that's very good. I think faith resides in each and every one of us. And each and every one of us has a different faith, a different belief. We, we feel differently in different things. But pointing out 
that somebody is not a Christian or, you know, that, that is very discriminating. And we, we as a society have moved forward. I mean, we have moved forward so much, but to sit there and backstep and say, oh, it's okay to discriminate against one person because we have more, we're the majority, then we are going back to the 1960s, the 1940s, and the 1950s, or 1930s. And, and that's not what's in my heart. That's not what any God would, would want or would cherish. And I, I think that we should, when we do do prayers, that we should acknowledge this. And, but at the same time, we have to remember, if we do allow prayer, we have to allow all prayers. That means if the satanic temple would like to come in and say a prayer, they would have the right, just like at City Hall, they would have that legal right. But I would like to put as a motion that we do prayers in a respectful way. We're, we're encouraged to pray, but to do it nicely, to not nicely, how do I want to say it, respectfully. Uh, I mean, I have no problem with prayer. I do when it gets to the point where it's just preaching. It, it becomes preaching or, or, you know, targeting. So my motion is to allow prayer as long as, what would the term be? As long as it abides by the rules. Mm, yes, ma'am. Okay, is there a second? Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Is there a second? Is there a second? We'll do a second. I'll do a second. Yeah. And then we'll do a discussion. Okay. Uh, the beginning of the meeting, correct? Implication. Okay, discussion. Like I said earlier, I've been around a long time. <clears throat> In my lifetime, there has been a come to Jesus be the beginning when I was younger. And today's world is generic. It's totally generic. In which, if nothing wrong with that, I think this board, for the last two years I've been on it, when we say invocation, it is generic, more or less. We don't point out that Mr. Miles said this, Mr. Co Ms. Cobb said that. We never did that on this board. Yes, and I've been yeah. here for going over three years. That never, that never happened. So my comment is we can say prayer. And I vote to have prayer. And we will respect each other no matter what, because that's the name of the game. So, we have, um, Paul made the motion and Bear made the uh, second. All in favor to have prayer at the beginning of the meetings? In the invocation. Discussion. Sorry, Excellent. anybody else for discussion? I'm still getting the hang of this. <laughs> Does anybody else would like to add to the discussion? I have a point about part of this agenda item is creating a nonpartisan process for, for doing that. And so I think it'd be good for y'all to discuss that for the staff and also the process. I think the, the best way to do it would be to to take our list. It's our list. Uh, first, I, I'd like to ask staff uh, our board members' list. Are our names always appear the same way? Because what I'd like to do is maybe we could just start with say and go down the list that way. Each person has a chance to say prayer or if they choose not to say prayer, they can do a one minute of silence or a two minute of silence and so forth. Uh, that is an amendment to the motion, right? Yes, I'm, I'm amending my motion to yes, say prayer with. No, it's it's the process. Process. Oh, the process. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's what they're yeah. yeah. Um, I understand what you just said, but I don't think 
that that would be, it would put the board, I suppose they didn't want to, uh, they don't, shouldn't be called out to do something if they don't want I, to. I agree with, so with I that. I think it should be volunteer if they wish to do the invitation. Okay. Fine. But I don't think you should take the list and say, oh, this is, this is Mary's turn. I I agree with that. So, I, I agree with that. Be purely voluntary. Okay. I have no. What you got to say, Like I say, since we got the uh, brief mm -hmm. that kind of uh, complicated, we we can't really decide based on what she told us. So why don't we take times and then. Uh, make a decision later on, uh, maybe next, next month. So you'd like to make a motion to table it right, until right. next so month? So I, I was second your mo the amendment motion. There's no amendment motion. There's no amendment motion. No amendment motion. But do you want to table the item right, so that right, we can right, think on right, it? Right, right. That would be a good idea because we can't point, just decide right away. It takes more than just... It would take a majority of the votes to do that. They've already voted and it already passed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have mm -hmm. We didn't vote it yet. We're still in discussion. No, I voted. I voted. I didn't vote at all. No, no, no we didn't vote yet. We're still no, in discussion. No, because you told us that we should have a process to you. The same thing, Yeah, I voted on, on whether or not they're going to have a prayer. This part that you're talking about is the procedure uh, by which y'all are going in. She, made, she yes. made a motion, I seconded it, and we started discussing. So she had not had finished notice. discussing. Once we finish, she has to call the vote. So we have not voted on anything yet. Okay? My, my question is... He, he's making a discussion. I, I, don't, I can't... He, he I just say hear, you would like to go I a motion if that to table. Line Mr. Lee, our Christian prayer. You, Mr. Oh, Lee, you can say me. since we oh, haven't gosh. voted, you can say I'd like to motion to table, table the item. Is that correct? Yeah. I think that's correct. You made you made the motion. He seconded. I call for a vote on that motion. You can't call for the vote. She calls for the vote. Okay, but he still has a chance to yes. table the item if he wants. So are you asking, do you want to table it? Is that what you're asking? That's right. So that's me? Yes. Okay. Because I wouldn't understand really what she told us, what she really means. Is she restricting our uh, no. prayer or invocation? No. Or we have open guidelines? Yes. Could you explain it again so that he will understand it? I have a translator. Oh, what? He's just, she's, he's wanting to have a copy of he it wants, and to look yeah. it over. He wants so yeah. he and can. wait until the next meeting yeah. to vote. So he can make a full judgment. Okay. On being okay. able to understand. I understand. What is, what do you say? Okay. I don't see why we couldn't take I mean, it. Uh, is there what we, what we do? No, if, if, if I disallow my second, and she disallow her vote, I mean her motion, and then we just go back to him. How about, can I just amend, here, let's make it simple. I would like to amend my motion, and I would like to table the item so that everyone can take the time and get the paperwork up. Uh, that Mr. Lee asked for so that we all can be very well informed on our decision. Is there a second? I second it. Okay, all in favor of tabling until the next, amending and tabling until the next meeting. Five yes and one no. What is it we're taking? 
that for you. Well, that we he, 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 he really don't understand what she said. Excuse me. Excuse me. Debbie. 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 We're tailing so he can get the paperwork, so he can take his time and understand what's going he, on. He needs, and, and that's only fair. That's right. Yeah, I second. Yeah, yeah. We all voted except for Miss Debbie. Two. Uh, two names. One. Everybody. So. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six votes. One. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next discussion on uh, discussion and action on bylaws for the senior advisory board. Um, there was an email sent out and she just passed out. To you. Page five, Article three. Uh, I need. I like that. Add something to that to say the all member must be a senior citizen member. Proud to get on the board. I'm already one. <laughs> I just needed to laugh. Article Article three. Page 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 Oh, citizen, yeah. I mean, the center? Center. center? Yeah, you got to be on the senior centers in order to be on the center of the yeah. senior board. That would have to go to council for approval. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would have to go to council because even though you're rephrasing what's already was here that was stricken, it's the same thing because there have, there's an age requirement to be a citizen for senior member. And right. So therefore, it's the same thing. It's just reverting without saying at least 55 years old. Correct. So, so you take a vote? No, it, it's, he's discussing it, so I'd, I'd like to say something about that. If we can't allow all, you know, the all members shall be at least 55 years of age. Now, my husband is 55 years, well, 56 years of age. He became a member. I got a card. Okay. But that is not fair to anyone that's 50 to 55, the next generation that's coming in to be able to participate in the board so that it's prepared to preparing the senior center and, you know, acknowledging the seniors outside of here. That the goal is, is for me as somebody that's up and coming, you know, um, is to preparing for my generation to come in, the next generation, and making sure that by preparing the, my, for myself to come in and for others of my age to come in, I, I want to prepare so that we're prepared for the next generation after my generation and so forth. So I, I think doing that would lead to some type of form of discrimination based on age. <laughs> okay, okay, my age group. <laughs> my age when, group. <laughs> uh, when, when the generation mm -hmm. has already lived, your, your ideas and reflection on the seniors are quite different. 
I'm, the I'm, ones that are mm -hmm. in this age I, I agree with you. I'm also 53 years old. Well, and I'll be 54. Okay, so so I, I got one more year. And, and so, you know, my generation, well, my age group, my age bracket is the smallest eight, how, without saying the word generation, I, I can't say it. Um, but yeah, we do. There's always difference in generations. And, and that's why it is a unique way um, by sitting on, on this board. For me, by sitting on this board, I get to see the older generation. I get to hear the older generation. And at the same time, I also get to bring what the, new gen the next generation coming in and, and what we like and, and things like that. And, and it, it, it's just, it, how do I want to say, it? diversified. It, we don't want to sh shut down the, um, I, I, can't, I can't even put it into words. Uh, we, we want to have everybody. We want, want to be a diversified group. We, we want the senior, I, or at least I feel that the senior center okay, so should have. Well, they took off the age. Mm -hmm. So you're saying we should be a little lower. You're no, I'm not saying a little lower. I'm, I'm saying. That others can participate regardless of whether they're members. They're mem no, no, whether they're members or not. I don't think that we should make, like Bear said, you have to be a member. I don't think that should be a requirement. See if it would cause an age requirement if they're members because unless they're a spouse that's younger, see the thing is the only reason I'm able to do it is because my husband is older. My husband's 60. I'm mm -hmm. still a year out from making the age group, so I'm in the same with her. But I'm a member because of my husband. Yes. What I'm getting at is you grandfather in no matter what, okay? The name of the game is get the right people at the right, because the law says you have to be 21 years old in order to drink. That's the law of the United States. Even you in the military, what you got to go out to fight and you get killed, the law still says 21. So we're going to stick with the law says, the United States says, 55 and older. But at the same time, you say your husband's 60, you come in with him, that make you 60. Your husband, you said 56? Mm -hmm. That make you 56. So you good to go because you got other things that requirement that meet that requirement. But somebody just come in, don't have yes. nothing pertains to the seniors at all because they just want to serve. No. He or she or somebody in the family need to be a member of the senior center. But if you read further into this, the mission isn't just about the senior center. In the mission, it also says to promote activities, recreation, and opportunities for healthy aging, independence, well-being, and opportunities to keep seniors involved in the life of the community. So therefore, if we limit it only to the senior center, then we are leaving a whole group of seniors out there that may not want to come to the senior center. And I'm sorry. I think that all seniors should have a voice. 55 and over. What is the required age when you say senior center? Senior. In the United States? Yes. What is the legal, legal age when they 55? 55 or a spouse of someone that's 55. So are you saying that they should be 55 and up? Yes. Because you're wanting yeah. to be a member of the senior center regardless. Right. Yeah. So in reality, just like you said, you know, 60 years old, that makes you 60, more or less, more or less. So they would have to put... So we can okay. put it into a voting on this. What, can I ask the legal? Yes. Okay, if, if you already said that there's certain things in here and one of them is changing this 
having this requirement, that means it has to go up in front of city council. So that means the more things that we add in that would have to go in front of city council for this to be accepted, that means it will be about approximately how many months before we would actually have bylaws again. In other words, we've set for what two over two years without bylaws because of having all these nitpicking well I don't want to say nitpicking but these things that aren't going to pass city council yeah so I don't have the um schedule order in front of me but I think it's typically like six or so weeks out to get on the agenda for any any item there's a dead there's a cut lot, there's a cut off date and there is a schedule. I guess I don't have it with me, and so I can't tell you, but it's generally about six weeks out that you can get on the agenda, get this item on the agenda. And to your question also, that was the only thing that I read in the bylaws that would require, well, in the proposed bylaws that, that would require to come to vote. Anything, anything else in the bylaw is the standard, and so um, it's, if you guys voted to include that section, then the entire bylaws would have to be uh, put on the agenda for, for council to approve. But if you guys voted to not include that section, then you guys would be able to vote and to adopt these bylaws. I'd like to make a motion not to include section three under article three. Question. I got a question. That article was trashed through, so Article 3 is not really that when it's lying through, correct? That's not correct. So these are your proposed. These are, it's lying through based on, so it was sent to me and I reviewed them for a legal review. So it's, it's lying through and there was comments, but it, was, it didn't print with the comments. And so this line was made by me by just letting you know that that would be the repercussion, not that it's not there. This is just proposed. Y'all don't actually have any adopted bylaws. This is just a proposed bylaws to either adopt or to send to council for approval. So there you'll, you'll so actually we have any bylaws. Right? Take that off. Yes. Officially take it off. To officially take it off. And my motion is to officially take, art, okay, Article 3, Section 3, and remove that. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I was biting my tongue. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I, what you are saying, Ms. Teresa, is correct. Yeah. But all the same time, you have the person, I you say, you get French, that you call French benefits, more or less. Because I'm, I'm uh, 75 years old, and my wife 23. No, that's not going to work. She get the same benefits I get because she married to me. Well, what Ms. Teal is saying is that it should be open to all ages because that would still kind of fall under the same guidelines, correct? If there's someone that just so happens to be married to a member and they fall under the 55, she could still participate on the board. So it really isn't a need to have an age requirement in my opinion. And it also goes against city policy as well. Generally, if they put a rule in place or 
then they're generally not going to just be like, oh, I don't have that role there, but I'm just going to do this or do that anyways. And so I think that, like I said, don't speak for council, but it's likely that if they decide, if they, the council votes, if y'all vote, to let it stay, and then it goes to council, and if they say yes or if they say no, it's likely that that's going to be moving forward how, how it's going to happen. Ms. Hall, uh, before these uh, bylaws came out, wasn't there something in our old bylaws that said that we had to have a couple of people on our board that was 55? <coughs> it didn't say the whole board. I don't remember hearing anything about them being that. Yes, it, it's on the... it's. Mm -hmm. If you look at the I website, it own. states on the website that so many members have to be 55 and older, and then the rest have, can be any age, but there has to be a mandatory number, and that's why this particular statement, um, the all members shall be at least 55 years of age, that is why it goes against, uh, the bylaws go against what the city has written. It's on the city webpage. We have, I think it's what, six or five or six, so many members, it's on the city page, I don't have the city page with me. But we have to have so many. So out of 11. Yeah, so many, I think it's, I think there's more. Yeah, it's on the web page. So right now I'm trying to, you guys have two motions out here, that's all I want to just bring it to the forefront. You have Mr. Jones' motion that we keep that actually not the language. His motion was that we include language under that section that says that you have to be a member of the senior citizen center in order for you to serve as a board and y'all need to complete that round. And then also, this still has a motion out there that says to take it off and y'all need to complete it out. So I'm just saying there's multiple motions okay. right now. And that's a little bit okay. of a Let's, some, let's, uh, since his was first, let's, do we have a second to bears? A second. Okay. Um, we need to take a vote. Oh, okay. Would they be all members of the senior center? <clears throat> that include uh, Miss Tia category and her husband is a member that make her a member. Stella husband is a member that make her a member. Well, and it is right. To a point that okay, we're we're, we're in the vote. vote. I have a copy of all the all the membership requirement here. Says uh, senior citizen advisory board shall consist of eleven members. Six of the eleven members shall be at at least fifty five years of age. So. Out of 11, 11 members, six members only should be 55. Other members can be a little bit flexible. That's, That's what, what it says. This is the copy I got last year. Okay. Yeah. So as long as there's six members, that would know this section three. But we need to, to finish that motion. Okay, he, the, he wanted clarification. Yeah. He put out a motion that he wanted all members that go on the board to be members of the senior center. And then there was a second. So we wanted to take a vote to see who approved yay or nay on that vote. All in favor? All in favor that they all be members of the senior center. One, two, three, four, five, six. All not not in favor. Passes uh, six votes 
Mine's nulled. Mine's nulled. You, you guys, may, you can't vote on mine now. You guys voted for this. Are you telling him to have the vote? I'm sorry. No, I think I'm Mr. Lee wants to change to his vote. I'm not telling him how to vote. I'm just. I did. Mr. Lee. Yeah. Did you have a. Did he understand? Did you understand what you're. Yes, I understand, but. Uh, you you I, voted I mean, to change the bylaws to everybody must be a member of the senior center. Should be, yeah, yeah. That's, okay. that's easy, easy okay, to. Okay, so we yeah. voted to approve the bylaws with that amendment. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. I'd like to make a motion to move this to city council as soon as there's a date available. That's not really a motion. That no. Oh. Oh, okay. So, so I do have a question. I am a membership. I have a membership card and all that. So, you good to go? Yeah, I, I just want to make sure, since you know discrimination runs rapid around here. Uh, yeah, I do. I see. Okay. He is grumpy bear. <laughs> we have discussion and action on survey questions on programs, food, and activities for seniors. I don't have a cup. How, how often do you frequent the senior, the senior center? Like daily, monthly, weekly, every other month or so? Um, there's, are you a registered as a volunteer? How do you normally get to the senior center? Um, do you feel safe at the senior center? Do you feel the staff is helpful and friendly? Um, do you think the current way the meals are served are as effective as possible. Um, do you feel communication is effective within the center? And how do you, or how, and how do you know what's going on? Um, do we provide enough community services, resources, to feel safe and helped outside of the center? What events, educational activities would you like to add or um, 
then thanking them. Is there? Let's have discussion on. Would there be one in their life? They complain a lot, but they don't know what to do with their complaints. So, or who to go to? How to handle them? Yeah, a lot. Of them. They complain, but they don't know where to go or what to do. So, how to complain <laughs> should be explained. Then, um, who to go to? Okay. Anybody else have a? Anybody else have a question or a statement or anything to put on the survey? Oh, no. I'm, I'm on the survey. I want to ask how it's going to be tallied and It would go to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to explain what in after you guys started. We were talking about the survey. So I apologize that it was not supposed to be sent to you until we had reviewed it by staff, I believe. Oh, this was supposed to be an example. Okay, um, who gave it to you? It was emailed to me. Wow. Um, it was supposed to be examples. To okay, okay. So we got wanted to do a survey for, um, looks like, programs. So I guess we would start with what type of programs are you wanting or, um, that could be a question. Yeah, this agenda item is just about what questions y'all. Y'all well, already said y'all wanted a survey in the previous meeting. So this item is about what questions you but want to be on the survey. table. Yeah, table from the previous meeting. We just wanted to know what goes on it. Okay. Yes. What type of questions um, did you get a chance to actually go over that? Um, I just kind of did a brief readout, um, and then I asked if anybody had anything to. Comment on these aren't anything, these are just examples. Okay. So, how many questions would you feel appropriate? Yeah. 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 Uh, I'd like to ask a question about E. Uh, if we have to sing the advisor board find something wrong that we think need to be brought to uh, the director of attention. Shall we go through you or shall we talk to the director in private? Talk to me? Yeah, because you're the, you the chairman. You don't want to make the decision to go forward or not. You can, I mean, I don't have a problem with somebody coming to me, but I would go to her. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Do you want us to go directly to her or go through you first? It's either way is fine with me because she's in charge of the center. Right. So you would go to her. So if you want to make a comment. She might want to stay in the loop. I, I would. Yeah. I would. Yeah, so. so you know what is, what, what I'm getting at I, I is mean, we don't have any say, so yes. It, the chain of command would be to go to Teresa or to a senior staff member. We are just a board, and if you would have read the beginning of our senior advisory um, board thing that we were talking about, our basic job here is to promote activities activities, recreation opportunities for health, aging, independence, well-being, and opportunities to keep seniors involved in the life of the community. It is the staff's job to make sure to manage and to, you know, take our advice into consideration and to bring our things to uh, city council, to Miss Councilwoman Nina Cobbs or Councilman uh, Solomon. So, yes, I would suggest taking it directly to a staff member because a staff member can handle it quicker than what we could if it's a broken toilet or fixtures that are wrong. Uh, I, I don't disagree with you. However, the chairman of the advisory board should be kept informed. They can take it to her by all well Oh, well, yeah. But, but the chairman needs to be informed on anything that's coming from this board. Yeah. She didn't, I mean, she'd have to agree with it, but 
And this is right. Oh, I thought he was mean. Oh, no, no. I take it back then because I thought you meant there was something wrong with the. So you're saying the clarification. Yes, please. Is there a problem within the board or within the center itself? Is something wrong I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I have to call the point order on this. This Thank agenda you. item is supposed to talk about discussion action on survey act questions yes. for the program. Thank you. And we are so far beyond that. Okay. So we have to bring it back. Let's go back to the survey questions. So, um, yes, um, with the survey, okay, what I would like to know is can we get a copy of those examples? so we can look them over and write down our own list. Yeah. And I think it's fine if y'all don't reach your contention that if y'all have questions, y'all just can email the chair, y'all the questions that y'all want to be on it and then possibly and then staff can, will make an entire list and then whoever said 10, y'all can just send which questions will be on that. I think that's probably the best yeah process and yes. actually okay. get it figured out. Yes. So you yes. email forward the chair and then we we'll have a full me. list and next time we'll y'all post more of those questions. You need to make a motion. No. Well, because if yeah. you do, I do. <laughs> okay. Here, I'd like to motion that, that we, uh, any questions we have, we email them to the chairperson and uh, then the list They'll will be, be made. Compiled and, oh, and, sorry. Yes, they'll be compiled and then we'll have the copies and we can vote on which ones we want on there. If there's more than 10, you know, which questions we want on there. Okay. Second. And ultimately, we'll pass out paper copies and we'll also have it available. I, 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 I second. Mm -hmm. okay. I second. Fair seconds for motion. Okay. All in favor? All in favor. It's my kid. The motion's approved. Okay. Uh, senior Center Operations Report. Our total, our total number of members for the month of January is now 6,020. We have 103 members joined, and I should say um, for January. Monthly attendance was 3,319. Our daily average is 100. We had 16 new silver staff members. Below are our events that we had for the month of excuse me, January. And the attendance of each of those. I'll give everyone a moment to look over the financial report. These are our expenses through January, and we're now in the fourth, excuse me, now we're in the fifth quarter of the fiscal year. This is reporting the fourth. Next page, these are our current events. I do want to remind everyone that next week, Thursday, is our Soul Food Luncheon. It starts at 11. We invite everybody to attend. Our maintenance updates our bingo light switchboard, the bulb replacement. We now have all working lights. Lights were replaced in the billiard rooms. Our senior garden was closed through March 18. Partial cameras were installed. Two are in the hallway, one lobby, one ballroom. This has been updated. Now our, all of our cameras are operating. We did close for facility. Excuse me, that should not have been in there. That was added incorrectly. Um, our current lunch count has increased by nearly 32%, and our kitchen angels are currently serving an average of 120 meals per day. And we still have 13 new programs, which has resulted in limited space for programming. Question. Yes, sir. Uh, on this meal program, we are serving 120 meals a day. How much food do we get from Wheels on a Meal? So we're at currently, we're at the max that we can receive. And what is that? Um, 98 meals. 98 versus mm -hmm. 120. Yes. So you, you read at uh, 22 short every day. Um, no, so we have a reservation of frozen foods, frozen meals that we do serve and offer. What right now I'm trying to do is have everyone sign up the day before in the hopes that Meals on Wheels can increase, but they're tight on budget as well. These meals are coming from Waco, 
you know, they're doing the very best that they can to accommodate us right now um, because of their, their budget and their limited amount of, um, I guess, meals that they can give out to each center because we're also in the area that delivers meals. So we have homebound people. Um, you know, we're doing the best we can. But okay. no one is being denied a meal. Okay. We'll find something back there. Peanut butter okay. and jelly sandwich. Question for you, Teresa. Is there out of the blue, I don't know if it's, is there any options, grant programs, anything to where we can get other meals coming in? So I have discussed this with Kelly and Wendy and we're, we're in the process of working on this. And will this affect when the new building opens? So will that be a division? On wheels. They are ready, they're ready to get started whenever the new center is open. But we may run into some of those problems because again, this is not our budget, this is their federal funding that they're limited so they're stretching, they're covering several counties, several cities, so like, you know, okay. we're in the works. Is there not one close to the end No, no. The end is even closer than what agendas so we tabled the um, bylaws the bylaws the bylaws are not tabled not tabled I mean um, not the bylaws the um, the update for the construction project invocation 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 invocation, invocation. Um, invocation. yeah we tabled the invocation no we did we approved that oh yeah yes yes we did we did table that yeah, we, 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 we tabled that invocation due to the fact Mr. Cho did not understand what the law you had to say. Okay. Mm -hmm. When he gonna get a chance to read it, then we had to do it next month. Okay, is there anything else that we need to add to the next week's agenda? Next month, excuse me. Yes, Holland? Um, I may need to add, um, how do I want to say it? Um, if somebody, before I do an add to it, on resignations, how much time do I have to give for a resignation to resign from a board? I don't think there's anything really required, but I mean, as much like, time. Like, if I'm planning on moving. Yeah, as much time as possible, but I don't think there's anything written in our notes or in our, anything that requires you to give a particular amount of time, but obviously, to, if there's vacancies and if you will create a vacancy, then probably advance notice would be great just for, so they will know, we'll get ready for council to try to see to, to appoint somebody else. So just as far as the best notice, I, I don't think there's anything requiring you okay. in that particular day. Okay. Right. Well, then I don't need to add anything. The next meeting is March 21st, 3.30. I'll be more than happy to resign right now. I, I actually hear. No, she said she couldn't hear. She said she couldn't hear you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to dismiss, to adjourn. Is there a second for a motion to dismiss? So be. There. Meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
Mm -hmm. so much help leading us. No, I'm not. I'm the most hated person here, sweetie. Yeah. I know you love me, but everybody else hates me. Okay, everybody. Grandma will be home shortly. And we are going to video stream as soon as I get home. Mm -hmm. Bye. Huh? What if, what if I resign too? You're welcome to resign. <laughs>